beyond the fact that someone took it, kind of the most frustrating thing about it was the employees had a chance to stop them. Hello friends. When I tell you it's a beautiful day outside, man, it's an unreal beautiful day outside. Nice cool breeze, but warm in the sun. I'd say it's like mid 70s Fahrenheit. Just very comfortable for riding. I am so grateful for weather like this. It's given a pre-fall vibes and just getting me excited for <laughs> a really nice mild season. The summertime here is phenomenal, but it'll be nice to have fewer balmy days ahead. Not gonna lie, it's been a bit of a mixed bag in the city. Within the same week, there were a lot of motorcycle network thefts. People, well, me, <laughs> and um, people in my network and people you've seen on the channel. So firstly, the easy story, it's still pretty stupid, <laughs> but it's the easy story. I went to a Goodwill in Milwaukee. And I had ridden my bike there and I had the foresight not to leave my helmet on the bike. I'll do that in a lot of areas and neighborhoods and stuff but this was you know a main drag and you never know who's coming through and it's kind of a transitional area so I brought the helmet in with me. I didn't leave anything on the bike and I brought it in but I went into the changing room at Goodwill for like 10 minutes and I had left my helmet in a cart. I brought my backpack in with me, thankfully, and it was just kind of one too many things to hold on to. So I just left the helmet in the cart and I thought it'd be fine for that short period of time, but Lord knows it was not. And someone stole my helmet, but beyond the fact that someone took it, the most, in, kind of the most frustrating thing about it was that the employees had a chance to stop them not because someone witnessed them taking it out of my cart, which they might have, to be honest. Someone might have seen it <laughs> get taken out of my cart. I wonder. Okay, that's not it. Yeah, someone might have seen it get taken out of my cart, but I don't, I don't think they did. But the woman had, I'm assuming, gone to some other department, grabbed one of the stickers off of like a homeware product or a miscellaneous product, put it on the helmet, and then she checked out with it. She checked out with my helmet. And it was absurd having this conversation with the people there because I was like, did you see anyone leave here with a motorcycle helmet? First person at the register said no. I went back, talked to some other employees, like, hey, did you see someone take anything out of my cart? Did you see someone take a helmet, uh, a gray motorcycle helmet? And they were like, no, let's check up front. And then eventually, you know, a manager came out and then, as I'm talking to her, the girl at the register, which maybe she didn't compute earlier, but she was like, oh yeah, someone just checked out with a gray helmet. I was like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. That's the helmet they stole. <laughs> and they were so confused, they're like, oh, well, I don't remember pricing a helmet. I was like, you didn't price the helmet. And they just kept being confused. They're like, okay, so did you, did you buy the helmet here? Or did you get the helmet here? I was like, no, dude. I came here on a motorcycle, wearing a motorcycle helmet, and someone must have just taken a tag and checked out with it. And it was comical getting them to compute that <laughs> because I don't know why it was so hard for them to believe. And especially since they were like, yeah, we've never sold a helmet here before. I'm like, yeah, there's a reason for that. It's not safe to sell used protective gear like that. And why, yeah, why would a, why would you get a helmet at Goodwill? It just didn't make any logical sense, but I think even beyond people who are motorcyclists, if you've literally never seen a helmet at that place before, like, why would you sell it? So, you know, that was my Bell Bullet. It was the most expensive helmet I had bought at that time. Actually, I think it is the most expensive helmet I've bought because the helmet I'm wearing now is a beautiful, luxurious helmet, but Icon was kind enough to gift it to me. Uh, as well as this jacket I'm wearing. So I don't think I have a contact at Icon anymore. <laughs> I tried emailing them and didn't see anything. Um, but, oh yeah, and my gloves were in the helmet. So they did steal a pair of Icon gloves along with the helmet. 
And so they did check the security footage and saw the woman who stole that stuff. And they're like, oh, she's a regular here. <laughs> so they have her contact info. They're like, we'll call her and see if we can get it back. And I'm like, damn, to be honest, I mean, I want it back just for the, just for the, you know, merit of it all to have gotten it back. Oh, it was so cute. I don't think I've noticed those duck statues before. We're on the Wisconsin Avenue, which I haven't ridden you guys on very often, and it's just so quaint. Oh, I think I got over right before the bridge is going up. Oh, and now we have to go. Well, that would have been so cute. Damn. Let me see if I can do a U-turn just to show you the bridge going up. Is that stupid? I don't know. I'm sure you can imagine. That bridge we just went over is going up so that uh, a boat can go through. <laughs> One day, I, that'll be like a vlog scavenger hunt quest or whatever there'll be big points once we are going over the bridge and whoa what i think that building is just rebranded i don't know if i've ever seen that before anyways yeah it'll be a nice little win if we ever get a bridge going up during a moto vlog so you guys wait for that day hopefully it comes <laughs> anyways point is they saw it happen on security footage as a regular there and so they said they'd call her and then get back to me, but you know, I haven't heard back and I didn't even call them back. I should, see, I should call just to see if they've reported it to the police because crime is on the rise, baby. That's a new sign too. What the hell's happening down here? <laughs> Crime's on the rise and it's pretty sickening, uh, but you know, I'm not surprised in the pandemic era. So she got away with my fancy helmet with the beautiful iridescent face shield that uh, cost me a lot of money. You know, I'm, I'm very lucky to have extra helmets, so that wasn't my only mode of protection, but that would have been a real bummer. It is a really sentimental piece, so I would have liked maybe just to have it back as a relic, something to keep on my shelf and look at and be like, what a beautiful helmet. This is my one of my first favorite helmets I've ever had. It's, it's not the most practical helmet, but I loved it, and I had it for two and a half years. And they don't make it in that finish anymore, so they do make other gray versions, but that titan that flawless titanium finish, they don't make it anymore. So, I mean, I don't know, hopefully whoever ends up with it enjoys it, and hopefully it doesn't get damaged or anything more on the way. But yeah, they made off with uh, Icon gloves as well, but I also have another set of gloves. That's not the most traumatic thing, but way more traumatic was my friend Dan's situation. He um, got his car broken into and they stole his garage door opener and then that's where his beautiful bike was staying. He's had that red Honda CBR 600RR. This is a beautiful chapel. And they stole it right from his garage. It was pretty insane and we're not sure who did it, how, where they made off to, and that, of course, was reported to the police. I mean, here's open, it turns up it was in flawless condition. He had just done all sorts of maintenance and even washed it. I don't know what's happening there. Um, and even washed it before it was stolen. Yeah, it's, it's a bummer. I don't think he'll be able to replace it this year. That's just a... Uh, and it's a beautiful time of year to ride, so we're, we're pretty bummed. I would ride with Dan very often. You know, then we kept learning of strings of other bike theft in the neighborhood. These, uh, this, there's a family that races, and I think they're pretty young. They're either, you know, in their late teens or early 20s, and I think it's a brother and sister that race. And they got home from a long race day, and they parked the, or they left the bikes in the trailer. They were like, you know, tied down, but they're left in the trailer, the dirt bikes and someone went ahead and stole them. Uh, I think, I don't know if it was just during the time that they were unwinding inside before unloading them or if it was overnight, but it's just, um, it's so disheartening that theft is on the rise and, and these, are, these are nice neighborhoods. They're just cute, low-key, well-maintained neighborhoods. Nothing fancy, just nice areas to live and I really I really love those areas it's like uh, north of the UWM University of Milwaukee campus it's just a real bummer that that crime is is creeping out into people's neighborhoods I mean there's always going to be a little bit of petty theft in in the city but 
This is a really cool music venue. Um, it used to be a ballroom. It's got an uh, interesting history. <laughs> uh, look up the rave if you're curious about it. Talk about protests outside of that. They'd had, they had some problems. They were a, an interesting club. <laughs> But the felony level Grand Theft Auto is a bummer. It's a huge freaking bummer. So we've just been dealing with that. You know, I'm lucky that I pay extra <laughs> to keep my bike somewhere pretty secure with like cameras and it's not accessible by the street. So I'm happy about that. I felt kind of silly paying so much money to keep it down there. I mean, it's 50 bucks a month. Depending on who you are, that could sound crazy, that could sound not bad at all. Yeah, it's just been like kind of a sad end of August. I mean, I'm, I've still been keeping up the spirits and I still have a lot of cool things going on and, and everyone else does and there's, there's still a lot happening, but we don't know what to do about it all and we don't know how to get to the bottom of it. People can buy tracking equipment and stuff to put in your bike, but you know, they're, those aren't cheap. And of course, compared to your full on bike being stolen, obviously it's worth it, but you know, a lot of us kind of try to, to cut down on our expenses until it's essential. You know, Dan, Dan is an entrepreneur like myself and that, that bike was everything to him. So it hurts our feelings. <laughs> it hurts our feelings a lot. And I've filled some of my friends in on all the situation and they're, they're pretty ragey about it. But we'll see, maybe it'll turn up. And I've boosted it a little bit and we can keep boosting it. Who knows, maybe it'll show up in Chicago. It's a great looking bike and I doubt that it'd be parted out because it's so pristine and you know, why not just try to move it as a whole? But I don't even know what people do. Like where do you even sell illegal bikes? I mean, it's just, you know, we never, we never think like criminals because we're not criminals. So anyways, I don't want it to be all doom and gloom this vlog. So I took you down Wisconsin Avenue. That's a pretty cool street. I hope you saw some cool stuff on the way. Now we're in a, a residential area. Um, I used to trick or treat through here. <laughs> I didn't live over here, but my uncle did. But this is a pretty cute little area. Gosh, what did they call this? Uh, Brewers Hill, is that right? Maybe. Um, we're not far from the baseball stadium. It's out that way. Actually, let me see if I can take you to the stadium. Okay, I can't turn left this way, <laughs> of course. But let me see if I can get a, a solid vantage point of the baseball stadium from here, because it's kind of cool. Milwaukee's got two major sports teams right in the city. I think Wisconsin maybe is most renowned for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, and Green Bay is like kind of a small area, <laughs> but it's, it's very cool to visit. We've got the Brewers, Milwaukee Brewers, and the Milwaukee Bucks. This is just like your classic, like, just line after line of taverns and bars. Uh, Wisconsin is pretty known for, for the beer culture. Kelly's Bleachers, open 365 days a year. And then this is a cool little park. And oh yeah, you can see the stadium from here. The roof opens and closes at the baseball stadium. I mean, one of these days I can take you guys over there because it's actually very impressive and there's a lot of cool, funny little roads out that way. I don't think I'm at a high enough vantage point for you to really see the stadium, but you, I don't know, hopefully you saw the arches of it. I mean, I can get further down here. I mean, yeah, let's just get in here. Miller Park. So Miller is very popular beer brewery based in Milwaukee and that is the park where the brewers play. <laughs> yeah, this was easy. I don't know why I didn't think. Look at this. It's, um, it's a pretty beautiful thing. And of course, during COVID, we did not have any, let's see, that was around. We did not have any baseball games. So I'll see how close I can get. So this is a fun adventure. Boost the mood a little bit, but yeah, I'm not too, I'm not too sore about the, the helmet thing because I've already loved it for two and a half years. The uh, monetary value at that point had depreciated and it was all just sentimental. And you know, I wasn't hurt, I wasn't held up and I still have this beautiful bike and I still have another great helmet to work with. Looks like something might even be happening. And you know, it's funny, I guess I misled you. There are games still happening, but there's just no um, audience at them. There's no people in the stadium. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what 
what the games look like. Dan's got a drone and he's talking about maybe flying it over it, over the stadium. That'd be pretty cool. It's it's a really cool destination. It's a great stadium and yeah. The Brewers. I, I feel like there is a game today because look at all these people around. So maybe it's just enough people to run the thing and to make sure that the, the players have all the stuff they need and whoever else has to be there, but no audience. I wonder if they're doing like very premium box seats because you could social distance in box seats. I wonder if there's like an underground fancy social distant entertainment ring. <laughs> Us plebs, we can't get seats in there during the games, but everyone else on the top end can, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, yeah, this, oh, the temperature right now, it's just so, it's so nice. I'm wearing like a three-quarter length, I'm wearing a baseball tee, actually. <laughs> Man, I wonder if this isn't going because I'm all small and it's not giving me, I'm gonna just, just gonna go. <laughs> Hopefully I can escape properly, but you guys won't be able to really hear me while I'm on the freeway. Maybe I should just loop around, let me see. There's nobody around. Oh, and a funny thing, I don't know if you can see that yellow slide, but the mascot, Bernie Brewer, <laughs> when there's a home run, he'll slide down that slide, which is pretty fun. <laughs> oh, now it changed. Maybe I jumped the gun. <laughs> I think I'm supposed to be on this side. Anywho, I'm just wiling out over here. So yeah, there's a little tidbit for you. Pretty cool piece of architecture. It's actually very sad there was a crane accident and I want to say I think two or three people died while while building the new stadium. It's too bad that sometimes that stuff happens. Oops, I'm the wrong way. And I'm just, thank goodness there's no one around because I'm really riding like an idiot. When um, Amanda Zitto as a magpie flies, when she was in town, I was riding the wrong way on the street for like a full half block <laughs> or full block. And uh, that was pretty embarrassing. Like, welcome to my city. I don't even know how the streets work. But in my defense, oh, that's a cool building. What the heck? Oh yeah, this is there's a this is a cemetery. So I don't even know what that's for, but pretty cool. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, I it was just, in my defense, it was a street that I do not usually turn that direction onto <laughs> because we made a lot of funny little kid stop at the UPS store. But yeah, Story Hill. Did I say Brewers Hill? It's Story Hill. That's the area. Well, now we know. I'm going to take Blue Mountain to Holly and then straight on till morning. So I think I'll end the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. I think I don't have very much battery life left <laughs> or storage space left. Thanks so much for uh, listening to my little life update and for coming along on this little adventure with me. I will talk to you guys again soon. If you haven't yet, you should subscribe to this channel, especially if you've been watching a couple of these. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's not always doom and gloom over here. Um, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And until I see you next time, ride safe. Just me and mine. Bye, bye, bye.